I, I want to circle back to something that Mo just said. And I wasn't sure if I was going to bring this up on the show or not. But I think I'm going to here. Oh, God. I know. It's going to be... A, some will probably feel like it's controversial. To me, I don't... It, it just seems like common sense. You mentioned it a couple of weeks also. Mo just mentioned it. It's happened to me two or three times now over the course of the last couple of months. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm all for people coming into our country, getting citizenship, and working in our country, right? However, I am starting to run into more and more people that are dealing with the general public that can't speak English. Uber, specifically now. I've gotten into like three or four Uber cars. Uh, I had a massage therapist I told you guys about a couple of weeks ago also that I couldn't communicate with because she didn't speak the language at all. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not some political statement on opening the borders or build that wall. (laughs) I just feel like if you're going to work in this country with the general public, like if you're going to work in a in um, a profession where you don't have to communicate, then go ahead. You know, who don't, you don't need to speak the language. But if you're going to be like in a ride share or in this case, a massage therapist or have interaction with, with, a, customer. with a customer, then you should be able to speak the language. Well, I, I, not, not fully, but enough to be able to communicate. Yes. I see you guys don't want to touch there. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I agree. I uh, I take a lot of lifts, and I've I've definitely had quite a few where my lift driver spoke zero English. I mean, no English at all. And I remember one particular ride. She was the sweetest person. Like she was very kind, but she could not figure out my location out like at all. And I couldn't figure it out because I didn't know where I was going. It was my first time going there. And we just simply could not communicate. Yeah. So much so that I ended up being late to the appointment and had to rebook it. And then I couldn't do that for like months. And in my mind, I'm like, if we could have communicated, it would have solved that problem. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that. And I know when you probably come to this country and you don't speak the language that the amount of professions that you can get into is probably pretty small. Right. So Mm -hmm. I do have some empathy there. But I also feel like if you are working in this country and you are living in this country and again you have a job in which you have to communicate with your customers it doesn't seem like a crazy idea to me that you have to speak english well i mean i i agree but i also disagree because i feel like there should be some grace given because it can take a little bit depending on your circumstance and we also have so many technological advances to help us communicate like google translate i, I, I shouldn't I, I I don't want to sound like a total a hole here, but I shouldn't have to use Google Translate in my own country. Oh, I our so we we have um, a house cleaner and she doesn't speak any English, mm. and we use Google Translate to communicate with her, and it's perfectly fine, and she's lovely. Okay. So you, but you don't feel that about visiting, just if you're permanent and you have a job. Oh yeah, and I mean we've got millions of jobs in this country, and I'm not saying look if you don't speak the language, you're not. You should A, be allowed in the country or B, not allowed to work again. And this is the one that's sort of circled and underlined and bolded here is if you are going to have, if your job requires you to communicate uh, verbally, then you should be able to speak English. I, I just think you should try. That, that's my whole thing. I, I don't think you have to be fluent. I know how difficult it is to learn another language. I'm trying now. It's, it's not an easy thing to do as you get older, but... You certainly should at least be able to know the basics of whatever it is that you do in order to be able to communicate with your customers. Yeah, if you're in rideshare, like you said, and you couldn't even communicate whatsoever, they had no idea where you were going and you couldn't point them in the right direction. That's zero English at all. So the stress now is on you as the client. Yeah, I I think there's a difference between not trying or having complacency and I don't need to learn the language and just coming here and, and not having all the vocabulary to be able to communicate. Because, I mean, as someone from Florida who's been to Miami multiple times, Mm -hmm. I think there's a certain complacency there because it's very easy to just get by speaking Spanish. But um, I I don't think people should be written off just because their English isn't there yet. But I do agree that if you are going to live here and this is the common language, then for sure learn it. But also, I'm with Kristen, like, we got to give people grace, especially in professions like Uber, where... It, it is kind of like an entry level thing if you're moving here for the first time and you're immigrating here. Like it's a very easy job to do without knowing the full English language. If let's reverse it for a second. If you moved to France, right? 
Would you work at a company where you had to speak with those from France without being able to speak French at all, be it rideshare, be it whatever industry it's in? It would be infuriating for those that live there. And let oh. me tell you, the people in Paris will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. But I think at the same time, a lot of people who come to this country who don't have the resources to learn English, which is one of the harder languages to learn. A lot of people put it up there with Mandarin Chinese because of all the unique in like idiosyncrasies of the language. When you go into these other countries, a lot of people are looking for work. So, yes, if I went to France, I would learn French, but at the same time, I would hop in an Uber and start driving not knowing French if I didn't have any other resources and I had to survive. Yeah, and let me again say this, because I think this is a, a key point that I'm trying to make is you shouldn't not be able to work in this country because you don't speak English. My point is that you should be able to speak it well enough that if you're in this country and you're working with customers, clients, that to me is the defining line. Or are we just evolving as a country? We're a melting pot already. Maybe we all need to start picking up other languages like they do in other countries where they speak multiple languages. All right, so we're supposed to change our language for those that are coming into the country? No, no. we're not supposed or to Or learn change. more? We, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're part of a global economy and a global yeah. society. We're one of the few countries that only speaks one language. Multiple others speak multiple languages. So maybe, some, maybe it can go both ways and maybe we can start learning other dominant languages like like Spanish or Arabic. Man, I wish you would have brought that up for four minutes ago. Well, I mean, think of, you've heard the joke. What's somebody who speaks two languages? Bilingual. What's somebody who speaks three languages? Trilingual. What's a person who speaks one language? American. Yes. <laughs> the Bird Show.